Tonight, the King 5 investigators reveal stakeholders in the Skagit Valley accuse Seattle City Light of using misinformation to greenwash its power operation on the Skagit River. For 20 years, the city's hydroelectric project has earned a distinguished green certification. As Susanna Frame reports in her ongoing investigation, Skagit, River of Light and Loss, groups including the tribes, say the city needs to do a lot more to keep its eco-friendly stamp of approval. The city of Seattle is known across the U.S. as a guru of green. For 100 years on the Skagit River, the city's generated electricity by operating three dams. And by the national gold standard, that project's an environmental success story. The Low Impact Hydropower Institute, or LEHI, gives it a green certification, the largest project in the country with this prestigious designation. That really is, is the bar to reach. Chris Townsend is a top environmental executive at Seattle City Light. And we hope to maintain that and be a leader uh, for uh, the rest of the country, really. To be green, Leahy mandates specific requirements, including this important one, fish passage, meaning the project must engineer a way for fish to get around their dams. But Seattle's dams don't meet that mark. The city has never invested in fish passage. The dams cut off nearly 40% of the river habitat to salmon species, including three on the brink of extinction, bull trout, steelhead, and Chinook salmon. So how did the city of Seattle, without fish passage, manage to earn that green superstar status? Several groups in the Skagit Valley, including tribes, say the city got around it by supplying Leahy with misinformation, falsehoods, and selective science. In Seattle's original Leahy application in 2002, and in two more for green recertifications, the utility leaned on this science from 1921, 100 years old, that showed salmon never physically made it up to where the dams are located anyway, so fish passage isn't necessary. The researcher said below Gorge Dam, salmon couldn't navigate these steep canyons, turbulent rapids, and rugged falls. That would be saying like uh, it never rains here in Seattle. Robert Howard is the general manager of the Soxhawatl Indian tribe located in the Skagit Valley. The tribe has filed a lawsuit against the city for allegedly deceiving them and the public about natural fish barriers the tribe doesn't believe exist. Even though we are so small, just about 300, we're mighty in nature, enough so to stand up to a big bully in the playground. In the three green applications to Leahy, City Light references the natural fish barriers 54 times. Here's what City Light didn't highlight. Page one of the 1921 science that states, the survey must be considered as superficial. It would take very much more time for a thorough investigation. And last year, natural resource agencies in the region agreed in public documents that the fish barrier theory is bogus, including the National Park Service. They wrote they haven't found any evidence of a fish passage barrier. And NOAA Fisheries wrote it's not boulders and falls, but the dam is the conclusive barrier for salmon to access upstream habitat. Seattle, you're better than this. Skagit County Commissioner Peter Browning. We were a little outraged at that because the certification meant clearly a lot to them, but they have to be honest. And in this case, they weren't being. We stated what we knew to be true. Seattle City Light says they gave Leahy the best science they had and that studies they're doing on the river right now could change their direction. Just because it's a different river now or we have different ways of understanding what the truth is doesn't mean that we were untruthful previously. It means that we did the best job we could given the information we had. The Upper Skagit Indian Tribe says they found evidence their sacred salmon can swim up past the falls of the river, but that every time that's happened, they say City Light has discredited their findings. So you feel like you have that proof now? Yes, most definitely. Here's what's new. This year, government scientists made a discovery biologists consider a game changer. Tiny fish they believed were coho, some of the weakest swimmers in the Skagit, found in a place City Light says adult coho couldn't possibly swim to or spawn in. For 17 years, John Paul Shanahan was the managing biologist for the Upper Skagit Indian tribe. So if a coho made it, that's definite proof that Chinook steelhead bull trout and other fish would make it up there. To make sure, samples were sent to the state lab to test for DNA. What did it say? It said coho. <laughs> yeah. And that was a good day? That was a great day. 
Several Skagit River stakeholders tell us if City Light wants to hold on to its certification and keep claiming it's the nation's greenest utility, they need to do a lot more to help salmon make a comeback on the Skagit and ditch the story their project doesn't hurt fish. This information, was it used deceitful? Was it misleading? Or was it half-truths? I don't know. I think accepting what it is and moving forward is what the resource needs and what the people who care about this stuff need. So the group that gives out those green certifications, Leahy, what do they say about all this? I interviewed their executive director who says they've been watching our series on this gadget with great interest and that if they find City Light no longer meets their criteria or doesn't do so in the future, they could demand the utility, remedy the problem or suspend or revoke their green certification and City Light made it clear to me, Joyce and Greg, that they definitely want to hang on to it.